I just woke up, so if I sound weird, that is why. A while ago, I made a video on single serving desserts. And then fairly recently, I put up some recipes for healthier desserts and treats. So for today, I thought it would be cool to fuse those two ideas, creating some healthier single serving desserts. Or actually, they're more like one to two servings per recipe, so you can also easily share them with someone. Quick disclaimer, um, keep in mind, I am not a nutritionist or qualified health professional, but I still think these treats are a good alternative to your average desserts if you like me, could have sweets all day. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's ideas, and now let's get into it. All right, let's start with these protein chocolate chip cookies. I'd never baked with protein powder before. It was definitely an experience figuring out how much protein powder I could add without having the cookies taste like Beyond Meat Burgers. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and line a baking sheet with parchment paper. In a small bowl, combine the dry ingredients first. I'd recommend using unflavored vegan protein powder. If you have a different one that's like, I don't know, vanilla, caramel, peanut flavored, I'm sure you can use it as well in this. But yeah, the outcome might be a bit different. Um, give this a quick mix before adding your wet ingredients. Natural peanut butter, unsweetened applesauce, and vanilla. Also non-dairy milk. Feel free to use your hands here when mixing this. Lastly, add dark chocolate chips and or cacao nibs if you don't mind their bitterness. Feel free to add some more chocolate chips on top. Bake these for 12 to 15 minutes or until golden brown. They'll get more and more crispy as they're cooling down. These are so good. I've made a bunch of different variations of these, trying all the different types of sugars and flours. I haven't made them yet with almond or oat flour. If anybody wants to give that a try, definitely let me know how that goes for you in the comments. Someone had suggested frying banana slices wrapped in rice paper until crispy. That sounds so good. For this video though, I decided to go with mango instead and also made a little coconut sauce to pour on top or to dip the bites into. Cut up a mango. Check and see how big your rice papers are and from that you'll be able to figure out how big the mango chunks need to be. I could have cut larger pieces. Fill a deep dish plate with some water and then grab your rice paper sheets. Each one, let it soak in the water for about 15 seconds before transferring it onto a plate or cutting board and adding your mango. I ended up getting about seven little wraps out of this. Folding over one half first, then folding in the sides and then rolling everything over. It helps me to dry my plate and cutting board after pretty much every wrap, just with some paper towels. Because if your surface is too wet, everything just becomes a bit too slimy to hold on to. Bring a non-stick skillet with some coconut oil to medium-high heat. Add your mango pieces to the hot oil. I cook them in two batches. Fry them for four to five minutes total, moving them around every once in a while. For the coconut sauce, I simply just warmed up all the listed ingredients. Light or full fat coconut milk, salt, vanilla, and optionally some maple syrup. And that was it. These are so yummy. Essentially giving you that coconut sticky rice with mango feel. Energy balls or energy bites are sort of the foundation of vegan treats. These ones here are peanut butter and berry flavored. To a food processor, add some dates that have been soaking in water for at least 15 minutes, half a cup of frozen raspberries, some small cut oats, some vanilla, flax seeds, natural peanut butter, and a generous pinch of salt. Blend it all up. I had to scrape down the sides a couple times in between blending. I got about 12 out of this mix. Yeah, roll them up with your hands and snack immediately or store them sealed in the fridge for up to five days. I love the fact that they're not too sweet. They're, they're just right. A while ago, my friend Julie sent me the following TikTok. Plus a request for me to try this with a peanut butter banana smoothie. So that's sort of what we're doing here next. There's not just a frozen banana in this though, but also a frozen zucchini because I'm still obsessed with adding that to smoothie bowls. 
added some ground flax seeds as well, some peanut butter, and uh, also some salt and some vanilla, plus some non-dairy milk. Blend it all up until it turns into this soft surf ice cream consistency. At this point, make sure you have some melted vegan chocolate at the ready. There'll be some notes in the description about that. Wait a few seconds until the chocolate has set. A, a thin layer of chocolate is best because that way you get the most satisfying cracks in there. This comment really made me want to try some ice cream-less banana split. The thing is, apparently I'm unable to cut bananas properly. It ended up being more of a deconstructed banana split type meal. Very tasty though, with homemade vegan cream and a quick chocolate sesame granola. To a small to medium sized skillet that's been preheating to medium heat, you're going to add some small cut oats, flax seeds, and sesame and salt. Let this toast for three to five minutes or until the sesame and the oats become really nice and fragrant. Soon as that happens, you're gonna transfer everything to a small bowl or a plate and set that aside. Add some coconut oil along with some rice, agave, or maple syrup. Let it cook for a minute or so before adding the oats and sesame seeds back into the pan, letting them continue to toast for another three minutes. And then after that, you're gonna quickly mix in some unsweetened cacao powder. You don't wanna fry the cacao since it burns super fast. Just take it off the heat and transfer the mix to a prepared baking sheet. Let the granola cool and crisp up for at least 15 minutes while you go ahead and make your coconut cream. Here's another thing that needs to be prepared. A can of full fat coconut milk needs to sit in the fridge for 18 to 24 hours um, to make sure that the water and the cream are separated. Plus, you want the cream to be super cool, super cool, <laughs> like really cold, so it whips up really nicely. Scoop out the cream part and add it to a food processor or a large mixing bowl. A blender is not 100% needed in this one. It just makes things easier. Add a pinch of salt, some vanilla, and liquid sweetener. Blend this up for like a good minute or so until it's whipped. Top your randomly cut pieces of banana off with some vegan yogurt first, then add the coconut cream. I can't believe that I've gone six years of being vegan without ever making my own coconut cream. It's so good. Exactly three cherries. Sprinkle some of the granola on top. Feel free to add more than I did or save the rest for a future muesli bowl. Oh yeah, that's right, I also finished it off with some store-bought vegan chocolate sauce. I have a recipe somewhere on my channel for a homemade almond chocolate sauce. That one's a bit more nutritious. Um, yeah, I'll link it down below. And that is it for today's recipes. I hope you enjoyed them. If you try out any of these desserts and end up taking a photo, feel free to share it over on Instagram and tag me. Um, now for this last portion of the video, I've got some fun miscellaneous Berlin footage to share and I'll use that as b-roll while I talk about today's sponsor a bit. Squarespace gives you the chance to easily create a new beautiful website. They've got a wide range of professionally designed templates that are just waiting to be turned into your own unique online platform. Could be a, a place to showcase your artwork, your new interactive online CV, um, a website for your vegan croissant delivery service. Can someone make that? happen in Berlin please. Use Squarespace to create a new logo or an email newsletter. Sure you've got tons of cool ideas that you've just been meaning to make a reality for a while now. Start today, go to squarespace.com slash minarom, save 10% by using the code minarom on your first purchase of a new site or domain. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon, bye! It's a hell of a ride.